essentially what we'd like to do here is we're going to go kind of through a four-step process. We're going to go from our disparate form data. So as I suggested earlier, you probably have a demographic survey. You probably have a pre-test form, a post-test form, and some sort of retrospective or open-ended survey. And so you have all of, you have three or four forms. And then ultimately what we wanna do is show you how do you turn those forms into raw spreadsheet data? And then how do you take that raw spreadsheet data, clean it up and organize it a little bit? And then ultimately, how do you analyze it and ultimately visualize that data? So we wanna kind of model that process and we're gonna walk through that together with some dummy data. Essentially, we're gonna go something like this. How do we go from a Google form that has its own kind of summary of the results to spreadsheet data that's kind of messy and not organized? How do we clean that up, get it into shape where it's actually meaningful for analysis and then calculate some numbers so that we can build a table or create charts, okay? So that's kind of the trajectory for what we want to do. So a little bit of information, just in case folks are not familiar with this, we think you are, and we know most of you have done some of this related to your usability testing. But the first thing you need to do if you have a Google Form, we know almost all of you are using Google Form, is you're going to be tempted to use these pre-configured charts on the summary tab. And what we want to encourage you to do is move away from that and actually build your own charts. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is you can customize the look and feel of them. And then also you can make sure you're only including the data that you want to include. And so one of the things that you need to do, and maybe you already know this, but if you click on the responses tab, you'll see here link to sheets. And ultimately, if you click that button, a window like this will pop up that says, do you want to create a new spreadsheet or do you want to select an existing spreadsheet? And most of the time, you'll probably want to create a new spreadsheet and then ultimately click create. And then the result, of course, is going to be this raw form data that Google has dumped into a Google Sheet. So the question is, and the process we're going to walk through tonight, is how do we go from this raw form data and actually turn it into something meaningful? And so to do that, we've created a set of dummy data. And this dummy data kind of mimics what we might have for learning effectiveness data. We have a demographic survey that has three items on it. We have a pretest with six items a post-test with six items, and a retrospective survey with five items. And so it's all dummy data, so it's really not that meaningful, but what we it's really about the process that we want to emphasize. So in a minute, we're going to give you a link to a Google Sheet that has compiled all of this raw data into a single Google Sheet. And if you look at the bottom of the Google Sheet, you'll find four tabs. There's a tab for demographics, there's a tab for pretest, there's a tab for post-test, and a tab for retrospective. Now, all this is is just raw data. So it's literally as if I had clicked on my form, linked to Sheets, Google Sheets, and Google had created the, a corresponding spreadsheet. If I did that four times and then copied all of that data into four separate tabs in one Google Sheet, that's our starting point for this activity. So let's move forward. So what we'd like you to do, please, is to create a copy of the learning effectiveness dummy data. So essentially our starting point is this Google Sheet with four tabs of data. And you can see by default, I have demographics selected, but there's pretest data, post-test data, and retrospective data. 
And so let's go ahead and start on the demographics data and just take a look at that a little bit. So one of the first things that I do is this is essentially how Google formats it by default. So one of the first things that I tend to do when I'm analyzing data is I'm gonna select the first row and I am going to turn on the text wrapping like this. That way I can see the full question in the form. And then after I do that, I'm gonna select all of the data and I'm simply gonna put borders around it like that. And then what I wanna do, I'm gonna select this header row and I'm just gonna fill it with a color, usually a dark color, that's just my personal preference. You can do whatever you want. And then I turn the text white, just so it's clear there's a header and I can separate the header from the actual inf information, the items that have been submitted. Now from there, you'll notice, let's take a look at the headings. We've got a timestamp, and these are just, these are old timestamps, but all of my participants had a secret code and they submitted in all kinds of different orders. But for the demographic information, I wanted to know three things. Are you a pre-service or in-service teacher? So I have all of their responses to that. Also, I have a Likert scale item. I consider myself fluent with technology. And you can see here, I've got strongly agree, neutral, the whole gamut, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And then what is your primary operating system? And this is the information that they shared. So one of the first things that I wanna do is actually select this top row and I'm gonna turn on the filter feature by clicking here and, and click create filter. Now, when you do that, one of the things you'll notice is that you get these little triangles in each header. And what that allows us to do is to sort the data. Notice that it automatically selected all the data in my table. And so what I wanna do is drop this down and click sort A to Z. And so when it does that, it's gonna put all of the data in order by the participant's secret code. And just to make that a little bit easier, I am going to center that column like that. And you can see the logic of my code. It was A1, BO2, C3, D4, so on and so forth. That's demographic data. We'll just leave that for right now. Let's move over to the pretest data. So we're in a new spreadsheet or a new tab now, and we want to kind of go through the same process. So again, I'm going to select all of the headers. First thing I'm going to do is wrap the text. And just because I'm fussy, I'm going to center it and align it to the middle. And then I'm actually going to apply, again, a dark color. So I, I'm clear that that's a header. And I'm going to change the text to white. Now, one thing I know because I created this pretest is it's actually, it has six questions, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6. But I know that Q1, 2, and 3 are about module one. So I'm actually going to use a different fill color here. I'll use purple for these. And I know four, five, and six are actually for module two. And so I'll use a different color there just to help me distinguish those visually. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply borders to all of them. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for our post-test data. Select everything, wrap the text, apply a darker color or whatever color you want, doesn't matter. and then select the first three, and then the next, whoops, the next three. And then just for fun, select them all and add a border. And then I just realized I forgot to sort the other one. So actually what I'm gonna do while I'm still here in post-test, I'm gonna select all that data, create a filter, Google Sheets automatically selects the whole table. I see the little triangles and I'm gonna sort A to Z. 
And what's really nice about that is now I have everything in order. And if I select all of these rows and I look down here at, in the bottom right hand corner, it reminds me that I, there I or it tells me I have a count of 15. And that's good because I have 15 participants. Let's go back and do that for the pretest. So I'm going to come back, select that top row, create a filter, click on the triangle, sort A to Z. And then just to make it a little easier to read, center that secret code. And of course, we've got one last one to do. So let's click on retrospective. Here's the raw data. It's kind of messy. I'm going to select all of those columns all the way to G, wrap the text, differentiate the color, and center. Select all of it. And then just for a little bit of visual differentiation, I know these first three items about were about my training videos. So you can see here the training videos were educational, the training videos were professional, the training videos were entertaining. So I'm going to make that one color. And then I have this kind of retrospective questions about knowledge and about confidence. And so I'm going to make those uh, yet a different color just to keep them a little bit different. And then last step, I want to go ahead and sort this data and apply the filter and sort A to Z. Okay, so what have we done so far? This has been really easy, right? It's really just been formatting, but essentially what we're doing is we're preparing ourselves to actually begin looking at and analyzing the data. So there's a few things that we can do. Let's just start for a minute with demographics. So one of the things that we might want to do is find out, well, how many of our teachers are in service or pre-service? And so that's really easy to do in Google Sheets. So what I can do is I can select all of this data in that column, come up to insert, and I could insert a chart, for example. And because that data was already selected, voila, I have my pie chart telling me that 60% of my participants were in service and 40% were pre-service. Pretty easy to do. Okay, I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with the operating system question. So I can go ahead and highlight that. Click insert, chart, and it's smart enough to know that I probably want a pie chart again. And we can see 53% of our users use Windows, 33% Mac OS, and then a couple of other people use something else. you should keep them separate because they're each about a separate data point. Be conservative in using pie charts, which is ironic because the first thing I showed you how to create was a pie chart, but be conservative with pie charts. Most of the time, a pie chart is just as easily shown as a table and you don't need to take up space with a fancy figure to just say 40% of my participants were pre-service teachers. But the short answer to your question is, if you have multiple things you want to show, visual things, they should be treated as separate figures so that you can refer to them individually in the narrative. I think I might know the answer to that question, and that is that you won't be visualizing every data point. So really, you'll be talking about your data points in the narrative, in written form, and then you'll only need to use visualizations for certain data points, right? So you won't make a chart for every single demographic item that you collect. You might mention each one in writing, 40% of, of my participants were pre-service teachers and 60% were in-service. 
53% were using Windows, 33% were using Mac OS, and 13% were using other. That's very clear in text. You really only need a visual when it helps to explain something. So we're, I think Dan is just showing how to create these, not necessarily with the intention that you would create a chart for every data point. And a table okay. sometimes can provide more data at, one, at a glance and in the same amount of space than a, say a pie chart here, where it's just one data point that's visualized. I think that's a great point, Ari. I think in two or three sentences, you could summarize all the demographic data that's mm -hmm. shown here without needing a figure or multiple figures. It just isn't necessary when you could just describe it in two, in two or three sentences. It's a little bit more art than science. So one thing to keep in mind is anytime you have information in a table or a figure, you need to explain it. So your, your narrative will always talk about something that's in a figure or in a table. You'll begin to learn when there's enough information that it makes sense to put it in a table. So with my demographics here, I only have three things. So it probably doesn't make sense to put it in a table because to Dr. Aries point, I could summarize it in three sentences. But if I had eight, 10 different demographic characteristics that I needed to summarize, then it would probably make sense to put the information in a table and then in the narrative, just highlight a couple of the, the most interesting pieces of that information. But then direct the reader, if you want to see all the demographic information, look at table one. Okay. I think also using uh, Dan's example, if there were eight different operating systems and you had kind of like this equal spread perhaps of percentages of folks using each of the eight, or it was, you know, all these different types of percentages, maybe then, and it was important what operating system they were using, because later down the road, you're going to talk about, oh, well, you know, Windows people, they responded in this way, you know, so you really want to show that, then you might choose to use a pie chart to show those, the percentages or the ratio of those eight different operating systems and who was using them, because that would be kind of confusing to list out in a sentence. 13% were using this and 20% were using that and 30% were using that. And, you know, then people are kind of like, okay, so wait, so how many were the most, how many were the fewest, what, a, you know, it's versus the chart can make it super easy, right? You just see, oh, look at all that blue. Most of them were using Windows. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's this idea of how to most effectively and efficiently get across the data that is relevant and useful to tell your story, right? Because the data is going to tell a story. It's always a bit of a judgment call. And what I what I have seen historically in this class is that te students tend to go, they kind of like creating tables and figures. So they kind of go overboard and, and they've got a figure for everything. And, and ultimately what Dr. Ari and I will do and critical friends will do, we'll say, let's pare it down a little bit to what are the most essential that really have the biggest wow factor and helping you tell the story of what you're learning about your participants and their view of your instruction and what they learned. So one more thing that I wanna show you just quickly, I'm gonna zap this top chart and just focus on this, bring this other one up. Try zooming in. So you probably already know this, but just in case you're new to working with Google Sheets charts, you can click on these three dots and click edit chart. And that will bring up this side panel here where you can change a whole bunch of things. And specifically, you almost always come to the customize tab and this lets you change different things. You can change the size of the font. You can change the pie slices. Like if you didn't want this blue, but you wanted something black, you could do that. And maybe you want 
map to be blue for some reason. So you can customize this the way that you want. And this is the area where you do that. Now, oftentimes when including a figure in your paper, you actually don't want this title to be there because in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you're gonna type the title out. And so what you'll wanna do is come to chart title and just delete the title itself and it will go away. So ultimately all you want is this image and the, the labels that go with it. But the chart title itself will be up at the top and written in Google Docs or Word or whatever you're using. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about how to handle these, these first two. Now, we've got a little bit of a different animal here with this Likert da data. And so my recommendation is anytime you have Likert data is to, because you don't want to mess with the original data. So what I like to do is select the column that's next to it and then insert a blank column. And then I'm going to copy the header over. And I'm also going to copy in the data itself and paste it in. So now I have two columns that are exactly the same, but I'm going to label this second one numeric. And so just, just to make it stand out a little bit, I'll make that a different color. And now what I want to do is I need to convert all of these Likert scale responses into numbers. And so how can we do that? Well, we could do it manually one by one, but it's actually, I think, easier to come to the edit menu, click on find and replace. And this find and replace menu is going to pop up. And so what we need to do is one by one, we're going to find one of the possible answers and replace it with a numeric value. And so let's start with strongly agree. And that's our highest value on, a, on the five point scale. So I'm going to replace it with five. And I'm going to match case. And I usually turn on search using regular expressions. That makes it a little bit more accurate in case there's a spelling problem or something. And then I'll click replace all. Now notice I have this entire column selected except for the header. And when I click replace all, we should see some of them turn to five. Now let's do the same thing for agree. And, but this time we want to turn it to four, replace all. And then you get the idea. The next value is neutral. We'll change that to three. And then we've got one last one, which is disagree, which is change that to two. And looks like everything's changed. Now what I want to do is actually I have these 15 responses. So I actually want to calculate a couple of things. I wanted to know across my 15 participants, what was the average? And so I can do that. I'm going to click in the cell right below my table. And I'm going to click equals. And Google Sheets is pretty smart. And it is saying, do you want to calculate an average? And I so I could actually just hit tab, and it's going to go ahead and do that. But just in case that didn't work for you, what you can do is you start typing in the formula that you want to use. And in this case, it's average. And it already knows that I probably want to select cells E2 to E16. And so if I click that, it's going to calculate that for me. Now, one of the things that I probably want to do, I don't want that long decimal. And so I'm going to come up to format. I'm going to click on number. I can trim it here to two decimal places by clicking on number. Okay, so I, I'm going to make that cell a little bit different and I'm going to bold it just so I remember that it's different than the other numbers. And now one of the things Dr. Ari and I have talked about is anytime you calculate an average, you need to calculate the standard deviation. And so again, I'm gonna click equals, 
and I'm going to start to type in standard. And just by typing in ST, it realizes you probably want the standard deviation. So I'm going to select that formula. And now this time, the AI wasn't smart enough to select the cells for me. And so I have the opening parentheses. I'm going to go up, make sure I go scroll all the way up to the top of my data and come all the way down. But make sure you don't select the average by accident, putting a closing parenthesis and then hit enter. And again, we're going to get a big long number. I think we can use this shortcut here to trim it to two decimal places and center it. And we can add some style to it too. Now we might want to take this a little bit further and identify the minimum and maximum for a four number summary. And so Google makes it really easy for us to do that. Again, I can click equals. And if I start typing in min, minimum, select all the cells, closing parentheses, and it knows two was the minimum. And then let's do the same thing for max. Opening parentheses, select all the data, easy peasy. And then we've got all the data we would need for a four number summary right here. Any questions about this? Pretty straightforward and I would say pretty easy. But we wanted to show you a couple of different examples of how we could use this information. So in my narrative, I might say my teachers consider themselves pretty fluent with technology. How do I know that? Well, they scored four, over four on a five-point scale, and the standard deviation was about one point above or below that average. And so overall, they consider themselves pretty fluent with technology. Uh, so that was a little bit about demographics. Now let's hop over to our pretest. Now for the pretest, we're going to do something similar. What we want to do is actually calculate how many of the items for each question were correct. And so let's take a look at column C here. And again, I never like to mess with the original data. So I always like to create what I consider a sister column where I insert that new column, I create a new one, and then I just label it numeric because I'm gonna convert this true or false data into numeric data. Now, I happen to know that the answer to question one, the correct answer was false. And so what I can do is I'm actually going to enter in a, a binary number, either one or zero for all of these responses. So if it was true, I'm going to enter zero because they didn't get it right. They're getting zero points. So go ahead and do that on yours. False is the correct answer. Just like that. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I'm gonna give you the answer key to the pretest and the post-test. So what I'd like you to do is take five minutes and go ahead and organize your data. So for each question on the pretest and the post-test, create a parallel column, grade it binary zero to one, and do that for both the pretest and the post-test. So go ahead and take about five minutes and go ahead and score the pretest and post-test in your spreadsheet, please. One of the reasons we wanted you folks to go through that was just to experience the time it takes to actually clean and organize your data. That's something people tend to, you know, people think, oh, my form's complete, I'm done, I have data. That That's true but to actually organize it so that you can analyze it and get it into charts and figures for your paper, 
there's a bit of work there. And we see it all the time that people tend to underestimate the amount of effort that goes into it. So now what we want to do is actually set this up so that we can compare our module sc scores on the pretest and post-test. And most importantly, also begin to slice that data by our demographic information. So in order to get to that end goal, there's a few things that we have to do. So the first thing that we have to do is let's create a new tab. So I'm going to come down to the bottom of my sheet and click the plus sign. And you can see here on mine, it created sheet five. So I'm actually going to select that sheet and I'm going to drag it all the way to the left. And I'm going to rename this thing. And, and I'll just call it pretest, post-test, comp for comparison. So that's step one. Now what I'm going to do is come over to my demographics tab, click there. And I'm going to make sure I still have my data cleaned, which it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the data. Actually, not all of it. We don't need the timestamp. So let's just start with secret code. And we're going to select these five columns. And of course, if you know your keyboard shortcuts, which I know most of you do, control C, command C, we're gonna copy all that data to the clipboard. So go ahead and do that. You don't need the average and things like that. That's not important right now. <clears throat> so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna come over to our new tab, pre-test, pre, oh, that should be pre-post, not pre-test. I'm gonna click in the top left cell and I'm just gonna paste, control V. Let me go ahead and rename this. Everyone good with that? Anyone need help? Okay, thumbs up, thank you, perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to copy over our pretest data. Now we've already sorted it so that we know that we have our 15 participants in a given order. And this is where we're gonna to begin to merge our test data with our demographic data. And so I'm gonna come over to my pretest data and I am going to be double check that I have it sorted correctly. And it should be A1 all the way down to O15. Yep, it's sorted correctly. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna copy uh, Q1 numeric. I'm gonna copy that data and I'm gonna bring it over to my pre-post comparison and I'm gonna paste that in just like that. And then you are probably guessing where I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna do that for our other numeric categories. Select the data, copy it and move it over. So go ahead and do that for all of the pretest and all of the post-test. Let's take a minute to do that. All right. So to move forward, the, there's a number of different ways we could approach this. I'm going to show you one way. So one of the things that we want to do is I want to take these first Q1, Q2, Q3. And I know that these are the the three questions for my first module of my instruction. And a perfect score would be three out of three. And a really bad score would be zero. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on tab I here, and I'm gonna insert a column to the left. And I'm just gonna call this module one, pretest score. And I'll make it purple so that it matches with that section. And now what I want to do is actually sum these three cells so I can get the pretest score for module one. 
And so how do I do that? I can type in equals and be a little careful with the AI. The AI is being a little overzealous here and trying to add things it shouldn't. So what I'm gonna do is just type in sum, opening parenthesis, and I'm gonna select these three columns and closing parenthesis and hit enter. Now the AI is helpful. It's saying, do you wanna autofill all of these? You can go ahead and click the green check mark and it will auto populate that for you. Now, if that doesn't show up, a very handy thing is you see the little square in the corner. If you mouse over it, your mouse changes. You can actually click and drag that formula all the way down and populate that formula across those cells. Now, I'm going to make this a slightly different color and bold it just so it, it, I remember what the test is, the test score. Now, one of the things that I could do is I can say at the bottom of this, there's a couple of ways I could do it, but I could say equals. I could type out the average, for example, and select all these and it would give me the average. The average is just over 1.06. Now that might not be too meaningful to most people. So what we can do is actually get a little bit fancier with this formula. So for example, what we can do, I'll come back up to the top. I don't only want the sum, but I wanna divide that sum by three. And that's gonna give me a percent. And I can drag and drop that percent down like this. So now I can see what my average percents are per person, what is the percent? And so you can tell for this module, people didn't do very well. They either got, because there's only three items, they got a 33% correct or a 66% and no one got a hundred percent. So now let's compare that to the post test. So I'm gonna come over to these purple ones again. I'm skipping over module two and I'm gonna insert a new, new column and I'll call this module one post-test. And you can probably predict what we're gonna do. We're gonna say equals sum. And then we have to tell the spreadsheet which columns we wanna sum. On my spreadsheet, it's columns M, N, and O. And we may or may not want to add in that divide by three. That's up to you. For right now, I'll just keep it numeric and auto-populate it. And then I'm going to make it bold and yellow just so we can see what we have here. I'm also going to come back over to this other column and take away the percent or the, the division because I just want it to be a number and not a percent for right now. So now what I wanna show you is how we might actually graph this. Well, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and, and calculate module two as well. So I'm gonna go module two, and this is the pretest score. And just like we did with the other one, create a sum, and it's of these three columns, and I'm gonna autofill and just visually make it distinct. Like that. And then of course I've got one more to do which is module two post test score. And I need to wrap that. So 
So obviously what we could do is compare now the module one pre-test score to, to the module two post-test score. And so what we might do is calculate the average for each of those columns. So it's 1.67 or 1.07, excuse me. But what I wanna show you is some fancier ways to do that, that make it a little bit easier. Okay, so for this next part, what I wanna show you, I think everyone realizes how they now, they have a module one pre-test score and a module one post-test score. But what I wanna show you is how you can mix that now with your demographic data. And the easiest way to do that, or, or maybe not the easiest, but one way to do that is to work with, with something called a pivot sheet. And so how do we do that? Here, select all of the data in your table. So start in the upper left-hand corner and grab all of this data. So every cell in the entire table is selected. And now you're gonna to come to view, or excuse me, I think it's insert. And what you wanna insert is a pivot table. And so go ahead and click that, insert pivot table. And then it's gonna ask me, where do you wanna do this? Where do you wanna put this pivot table? In an existing sheet or a new sheet? And let's create a new one. Now, at first, this is kind of an intimidating looking view because we're not really sure how to make sense of this. But what this allows us to do is we can begin to create a table automatically and Google Sheets will help us do this. So one of the things that we might want to know is, OK, well, tell me it, it's offering some suggestions. You can get rid of those. But one of the things I might want to do is add some values to this. And so I could look at some values such as the module one pretest score. And it's showing me that's the sum of all of the pretest scores. I don't want the sum. I actually want the average. And it's going to show me the average pretest score. And maybe I want to more than just the average of the module one pretest score. Let's say I want to add another value. I'm going to go back to the module one pretest score. But this time, instead of sum, I'm going to choose the standard deviation. It's going to calculate that for me. And then you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I can add another value. And I want to work with the module one pretest score. And I don't want some, but maybe I want the min. And of course, I can do it one more time and look at the max. And so essentially for my pretest score, I have created a four number summary right here with an average, a standard deviation, a minimum, and a maximum. That's pretty easy. And you could have done that on the other tab. But the real magic now comes from how we can split this data. So what we might want to do is add different rows. So I'm going to click on the rows. And what I want to know now is, is there a difference in the pretest score between the pre-service and in-service teachers? So I'm going to come to row, click add, and I'm going to choose the are you a precept service or in-service teacher. And look what's happened. Now I have two rows in my table, and I can see that there's a different average pretest score. The pre-service teacher scored a lot higher than the in-service teachers. And I can see the global average and all of the other data just like that. And let's say I, okay, I could write that down. I might wanna copy this and put it into a, another table uh, in another tab to save it for later. But I could get rid of this and say, oh, I, I actually want to base it on their operating system that they use. 
And so now I'm looking at average pretest score by operating system used. And Google Sheets has done all of those calculations for me. Pretty powerful. So this is an example of merging the demographic data with your learning data. Let's come over to the retrospective survey. And I just wanted to show you how to do a bar chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, notice I have three items here. The training vid videos were educational. The training videos were professional. The training videos were entertaining. What I want to do is just quickly convert this into numeric data. To save us a little bit of time, I won't have us copy. I'm going to violate my own rule and just convert this into numeric data. So I've selected all three columns. I'm going to come up to edit, find and replace. And I am going to strongly agree. I'm going to find that and I'm going to convert it to five. And replace all. Okay. And it, it reports back. Oh, there were five strongly agrees. Okay, now I need to do the agrees. I'm gonna convert that to four, replace all. I need to find the neutrals, replace all. The disagrees, change it to two. And then it looks like strongly disagree. Oh, it looks like I made a mistake. Strongly two <laughs> should be a one. Now that I have this numeric data, I realize I did that fairly quick. What I want to do is actually calculate the average for each of these. So I'm going to click equals, and right away, the AI notices up. Uh, he probably wants to calculate an average. So I'm going to go ahead and click tab, and then I can drag that formula over to all three cells. And then just for consistency, I want to make sure that there's three decimals or excuse me, two decimals for each of these. And I'll make it bold and just shade it a little bit so I, I know that that's a different column. What we can do with this, now that we have these three averages, is we can create a bar chart. The easiest way to do that, I'm going to show you, so is to do a little bit of preparation. So I know the first category is educational. So I'm going to type that in a new cell. The next rating was whether or not they were professional, and the last one was entertaining. And so I'm going to copy where what I want is to paste just the value. And so the very last thing is I just wanted to show you how to create a bar chart using that data. And it's really easy. So click in some neutral cell off to the side of our table and then come to insert chart. And you may need to move it around a little bit depending on how much space you have. My, my screen's a little bit crowded. And in the setup, you can see here there's a drop down. And by default, it happens to be the column chart, and that's what we'll use. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now we need to tell it what data to actually use. And so I'm going to click on this icon over to the right where it says Select Data Range. I'm going to click there. And it looks like it already has a cell entered. I don't want that, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to make sure my cursor is in this field. And then what I'm going to do is come over and just select these three cells, D21, D22, and D23, and click OK. And boom, we have our three bar column chart here. But we need one more thing. We actually need to add the x-axis. Right now, there's no labels for each bar, so we don't know which one is which. And so I can click here where it says x-axis. 
And again, I'm going to select data range, make sure my cursor is in that field, and then select these three labels right next to it. And boom, it's going to label educational, professional, entertaining. Now there's one last change we need to make to this. Because it's Likert scale data, the Y axis cannot start at zero because the lowest value on a Likert scale response is one. So we need to make this scale go from one to five, not zero to four. So how do we do that? We come over to customize and we click on vertical axis because this, this is the up and down axis, the Y axis, and we just need to change the value. We need to tell Google our minimum value is one and our maximum value is five. And when we do that, you see the chart update live, just like that. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I know it was a lot. For some of you, it might've been very basic. For others of you, it might've been kind of overwhelming. But the idea was to kind of show you the process of going from form data into organized, clean data that you can then do calculations with.